Welcome to day one. In day one, we will look at programs which relate to simple input and output statements. Just before we begin looking at the programs, a short section on how to make use of the video. Number one, you can just watch the video like a TV program. Number two, you can take notes with pen and paper and pause the video intermittently. Number three, you can open up the Python Idle Editor and type and run the programs as you go through the video. Or you can watch the video several times and do a different thing each time. The important thing to remember is that you have a very good choice. Right, now we are going to write a program that, for number one, asks the user to input their age and outputs your age is followed by the age. Okay, here we have the program or the code for question one. Line one reads hashtag number one. This is just a comment statement. Line 2 reads print question 1. So when run, you get the output here, question 1. Line 3 reads age equals int input enter your age. Input enter your age means that it program is expecting an input from the keyboard when the program is run. Int means that the input should be of the type integer. An integer is a whole positive number or a whole negative number. So let's see when run. Output to the screen is enter your age. Let's type 18 and press enter. When you type in 18, it assigns the value 18 to the variable age. Then you have print backslash n. Your age is age. Now backslash n means new line. So you can see that your age is printed on a new line, meaning you've kind of skipped a line, if you see my meaning. And then it's printed 18 here. This is because age has been assigned the value of 18. So that's it for number one. You may wish to pause the video and type this in, or you may wish to carry on. OK, let us look at number two which asks the user to input two numbers, calculates the average and outputs the result. OK, now here we have the code or the program for number two. The first three lines are comment statements, letting us know what the program is all about, which is to enter two numbers and calculate the average. This line here, the fourth line, says print question two. So here is the output, question two. The fifth line says num1 equals float, input, enter first number. So when run, it's expecting an input from the keyboard, as denoted by the word input, and it is expecting an input of the type float. Now what float allows is the user to input decimal type numbers. It also allows the user to input integers. So there is flexibility there. So let us type in a number, which is a, of a decimal type, 3.4. And I press enter. Num, and it assigns the value of 3.4 to the variable num1. Then you've got here num2 equals float input enter second number and again it is expecting an input from the keyboard from the user and it is expecting an input of the type float meaning it can expect a decimal so here we've got enter second number and if I type in 1.2 which is of a decimal and then I press enter so here I've got average equals num1 plus num2 divided by 2. Note that the division sign is a sort of black slash, so it calculates the average. 
So it's 3.4 plus 1.2 divided by 2, which makes average equal to 2.3. And then it says print slash n average is average. Slash n means new line, average is. So you can see this line here, average is, is printed on a new line, as in you sort of um, skipped a line here. And it's printed the value of average, which is 2.3. OK, number three. Ask the user to input the width and height of a rectangle and calculate the area and output the result. OK, here's the program or the code for number three. First four lines are comment statements letting us know what the program is about. Fifth line here is print question three. We've got here question three. And then here we've got width equals float input enter width of a rectangle in centimetres. The input statement means that it is expecting an input from the keyboard or the user and it is expecting an input of the type float as denoted by the word float. Float meaning you can enter a decimal type number. So here it says enter width of a rectangle in centimetres. Let us type in 3.5 and we press enter. Here we get height equals float, input, enter height of a rectangle in centimetres. So again, the program is expecting an input from the keyboard as uh, denoted by the word input. And it is expecting an input of the type float, meaning it can expect a decimal. So let me type in 1.2 and I press enter. Area equals width times height, so it times 3.5 times 1.2, and we get 4.2. And then it says print backslash n area of rectangle is area centimeter squared. So here we've got the output area of rectangle is area is 4.2, and then it's printed out the words centimeters squared. So here is the answer. To question three. Okay, let us write a program for number four which asks the user to input two numbers A and B and then calculates the value of C which is the hypotenuse and outputs the result. Now obviously here we are talking about a right angle triangle. There's your right angle triangle where A is the length of one side, B is the length of another side and C is your hypotenuse. To solve this problem we use Pythagoras's equation C squared and this is C is equal to A squared this is A plus B squared and this is B. Okay so this is the answer or A answer to number four. The first five lines here are comment statements which tell the user what the program is all about. Then we have print question four here. The output is question four. Then we have A equals int, input, enter height of right angle triangle. So it's expecting an input from the user and it's expecting an input of the type integer. So when run, it prints to the screen this line, enter height of right angle triangle. Let us type in 3 and then enter. Then we get B equals int, input, enter length of right angle triangle. So it's expecting an input again from the user and it's expecting an input of the type integer. Remember an integer is a positive whole number or a positive negative number. But of course, when you're talking about heights of triangles, you can only enter positive numbers. So let us enter the number four and it says calculates the hypotenuse of the triangle is five. How did we get there? Remember the formula here? 
c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So here we are applying Pythagoras' formula. Now squared, the way we write squared is a star or asterisk asterisk 2. This means a squared. The way we write squared of b is b asterisk asterisk 2 means b squared. So that is the value, value now of c squared. And remember c is the square root. The hypotenuse c is the square root of c squared. And so you write c underscore squared. And for square root, it's asterisk asterisk 0 0.5. So it's calculated the hypotenuse. And then we've got print backslash n, the hypotenuse of the triangle is, so it's printed to the screen, the hypotenuse of the triangle is, after you've skipped a line because of the black slash n, and then you've got round c comma 2, 5.0. Now, c is 5.5, 5, and round 2 means kind of uh, give the answer to two decimal places. Okay, in this case, um, because the answer is 5, it's not really given it to two decimal places. It doesn't have to, but that's what it means. So here is the code for number 4. Okay, let us look at number 5. Write a program which asks the user to input three numbers, A, B and H, and then calculates the area of the trapezium and outputs the result. Now, A, B and H obviously refer to um, some parameters of a trapezium. Here is a trapezium. A refers to, say, this height, length here. B refers to this length here. And H refers to this length here. Now, the area of a trapezium is A plus B, A plus B, divided by 2 times the height. So we will use this formula in helping us to write the program. OK, here is the program or the code for number 5. The first three lines are comment statements saying what the program does. This line here is print question 5 and we've printed question 5. Then we've got here A equals in input enter the length of one side of a trapezium and it's expecting an input from the user of type integer. And here, let us type in 3. B equals int input, enter the length of another side of a trapezium. So it's expecting a user input of the type integer and ascribing it or assign it to, to the variable B. So let's type in 4. And enter the height of the trapezium. Input, enter height of trapezium. Again, expecting a user input of the type integer and assigning it to the variable h. Let's just type in 5 and it's saying the area of the trapezium is 17.5. Area is calculated by a plus p divided by 2, 3 plus 4 divided by 2 times h, which is 5. So that's the value of area, which comes to 17.5. And it says print area of trapezium is. Here you've got area of trapezium is an area, which is, of course, 17.5. So here is number five. Number six. Write a program which asks the user to input two numbers and divides the first number by the second number and outputs the result. OK, let us look at a solution for number 6. The first three lines again are comment statements saying what the program is about. Here we've got print question 6, so that outputs question 6 here. Num1 equals int input enter first number. So therefore, is expecting a user or an input from the keyboard of type integer, as denoted by the word int. So when run... Enter first number. Let me type in the number 4. Press enter. 
Then we've got num2 equals int input enter second number. So here it outputs enter second number and it's expecting an input from the keyboard of type integer. So if I type in 5 and it assigns the value 5 to the variable num2 and if I press enter it says num3 equals num1 divided by num2. Remember the symbol for division is a backslash so it's 4 divided by 5 and the answer is 0 0.8 so 0 0.8 is assigned or num3 is rather assigned the value 0 0.8 num3 is another variable so we've got here print the first number divided by the second number is num3 so here we've outputted the first number divided by the second number is and num3 is 0 0.8 so here is a solution. OK, we are on number seven now, which is to write a program which asks the user their name and asks the user what their favourite subject is using the name in the question and responds to their answer by saying that you like that subject as well. OK, so this is a solution for number seven. Again, at the top here we have comment statements, then we have print question 7 here, print question 7 here, the output. Then it says name equals input, what is your name? Now it is expecting an input from the keyboard and it's expecting a string. So it, if it outputs to the screen, what is your name? Now if I put my name as say Bob and I press return, what happens is it assigns the value Bob to the variable name. Now you get subject equals input, what is your favourite subject? So it's expecting an input from the keyboard when it says what is your favourite subject and if I say maths, no actually let me change that, I will say it's computer science So and I press return so what's happened here, it's assigned the value computer science to the variable subject. Then it says print name, your favourite subject is. So name is Bob. Then it prints your favourite subject is, your favourite subject is. Subject is, of course, computer science. There is no other subject. So it prints subject. And then it prints backslash n. I like that subject as well. I like that subject as well and backslash n means you like. Okay, so that is number seven.